So let's begin with this guy. Prove that 3 to the n greater than or equal to, you can write that down, it's not too complicated. Okay? So let's begin the way we normally do. What's the first step in every proof by mathematical induction? I'm going to test, right? What's my uh, first value of n? In this case, have a look at what n has to be. Tell me my first value. 1. This is my, my standard 1. Okay. Now, you can set this out in a variety of ways. Um, the way that is in the handout that Mrs. Lees has provided is a really good logical one. I, I set it out slightly different. They're both fine. You set along whichever you prefer. I'm actually going to start with the right hand side for a reason that will become clear in about 60 seconds time. Okay. What is the right hand side when n equals 1? It's going to be 3, but don't forget, like you actually have to prove that this is the case. So I'm going to wipe the simple uh, numbers there and get my value. Okay? There's my right-hand side. I'm now going to do my left-hand side. Again, what's the left-hand side equal to? It's just going to be 3 to the 1, which is 3. Now, note here, you have exactly the same thing. Is that okay? Does that satisfy the inequality? And the answer is it does because my boundary is included. Okay, so here, and this is why I did the right-hand side first, I know what the right-hand side is. The left-hand side is indeed greater than or equal to the right-hand side. Do you agree with that? Like it, it works? Okay, so therefore it's true for n equals 1. Just for reference, the reason why I start with the right-hand side is so that my final line has the left on the left and the right on the right. If you started with the left-hand side and then you started doing with the right-hand side, your inequality would be the other way around and just my brain starts fizzling out when I try to change things around. So I want to avoid that as much as possible. That was the first step, the test. What's the second step? Assume. assume. Very good. So I'm going to assume that this statement is true for my particular value k, and k is going to follow all the same rules as n. So I'm going to write that down, that k is a positive integer, just like n is. So we can just go ahead and write down the assumption. There it is. And now we get to the meat of our proof. We are going to prove true for, say it all with me, n equals k plus 1. Very good. So. Let's write that this next, this next step and be careful with it. Now, I'm just going to pause here before I write the rest of the line. Remember I said to you before, algebra, 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 the most common error I see, especially under exam conditions, when you are in a rush, is people will write this. Because they're like, well, there's, there's the k and then there's going to be k plus 1. It's the next one, right? What is wrong? Yeah, I'm missing brackets. I haven't actually substituted k plus 1 where n belongs. I've substituted k and then I've just added 1. So that's different, isn't it? And you're going to run into some trouble later on if you don't have that correct. I'm going to tidy this guy up a little bit. Uh, that's 2k plus 2. That's 3. I am unsatisfied with that. OK, there we go. So this is the statement I'm aiming to prove. And there are two primary strategies that we can use. I can aim to get everything on one side and then prove it's positive. Or I could start with this line here, the assumption, okay, and then work with that. In this example here, I'm going to have a go at using everything on the left hand side. So I'm going to get all terms with k's in them, like this over on the left hand side, I want to prove that that is greater than or equal to zero. That's my goal. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, have I got enough space? Yeah, I reckon I'll make it. I kind of want to keep those points there because they're useful. What I'm going to do now, here comes my proof, is I'm just going to think about this left hand side and I'm going to work with it. Okay. So the left hand side, I'm just going to write it character for character, 3 to the k plus 1. Minus 3, minus 2k. Right? Now, just like in every other mathematical induction proof you've done so far, I want to shape and form this in such a way so that I can see this, the assumption, in there. Does that make sense? I want to I work with this, manipulate it, until I can see terms that look like this. Okay? Now, you can see there's a 3 to the k here on the left hand side. There's a 3 to the k in my line over here as well, but it's kind of hiding. What's sort of in the way of the 3 to the k on its own? 
Yeah, there's another factor of three right there. So I'm going to write it with that taken out so that I can see it a little more clearly. OK, now let me take a brief excursion for a second. And you might want to write this down on the side in another color if you like to think about this idea. Remember I said inequalities are not the same as equations. Okay. Now. Let me say something really, really blindingly obvious for you, and I want you to write it down with me, even though it looks really simple. 50 is equal to 50, right? Last I checked, this is true, okay? That means that 50 is also equal to 49 plus 1, because these things are the same, right? But now watch what's about to happen. Put your pens down and look up, because this is just, it's true and obvious, but weird. If 50 is equal to 49 plus 1, then it stands to reason that 50 is greater than 49. Just think about what's happened for a second, because when we've been dealing with equations, right, one of the things that's so important about equations is that every single line stays the same. And so far, that's kind of what I've been doing. Everything has been staying the same. Everything's been staying balanced. But I've just changed things, right? Like from this line, to this line, 49 plus 1 and 49 are not the same thing. Why can I do this transition? Which of these is bigger? 49 plus 1 is bigger, right? Hey, Excuse me for interrupting. There are two ladies in the foyer from. Oh, they're coming. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll send someone They're in. in the foyer. That's fine. Okay, they were you. supposed to call, but thank you. Sorry, we have some visitors. Don't worry, you guys are used to it. OK, now, so where are we? The reason I can do this, which you absolutely cannot do with equations, but you can with inequalities, is that this is bigger than this, right? But the left-hand side hasn't changed. So the left-hand side is now bigger than the right-hand side. Does that make sense? I transition from an equation to an inequality. Now look at how I can do the same thing over here. Okay? Do you notice? The left-hand side, I haven't done anything to that. I haven't manipulated it in any way. So it's still equal to this. What would happen if I switched out this object here for this object here? Think really hard. Over here, what have I done? I actually didn't write it, which is a bit sneaky. I swapped out this 1 for a 0. Right? Because I know that 0 is smaller than 1. So my result is now smaller on this side. Right? Well, I'm switching out 3 to the k for 1 plus 2k. Which one is bigger? 3 to the k. So I'm substituting it for something that's smaller, aren't I? Right? Or equal. So as a consequence, what I now have on the right hand side should be smaller. Smaller on this side. Right? If I do that substitution. Does that make sense? Now, this is what I mean by, whoa, this is weird, right? These two things are not the same. But I have to do that because I want to turn an equation into an inequality. Okay? So I'm going to, and you should, you should emphasize this as well, right? Um, in another color, can you see I've used the assumption here, so like usual, I should write that I've done that by assumption. And I can substitute something for something different in order to turn an equation into an inequality. This is weird. If it feels strange in your brain, that's OK. It's going to feel strange for a little while until you get more comfortable with this idea. But it's kind of the crucial thing that makes these inequality proofs different to all the rest of them. From here, it pretty much kind of unfolds by itself. There's one more little trick up my sleeve, but let's just expand this. This is just algebra, right? What do I got here? I got 3 plus 6k minus 3 minus 2k. Yeah? Uh, I can collect some like terms here. How many, what constant terms left over? The constant term left is 0. Uh, what k, how many k's do I have? And the answer is 4 of them. Okay? But again, I've got to think about my inequalities for a second, right? Do you remember k is not just any number? Look at the board. What kind of number is k? Positive integer. It's a positive integer. Here it is. So what is the smallest value that k could take? 
the smallest value it can take, as I've already tested, uh, is 1, right? So I'm going to say down here, I might even put it in another color just to highlight it, and you might like to do the same. I'm going to say, but k has to be greater than or equal to 1. That's what it means for it to be a positive integer, right? So, if k is greater than 1, what can we say about 4k? Well, to get this, which has a k in it, to become 4k, I'm just going to do what I would do with an equation and multiply both of these by 4. That's true, isn't it? I do that all the time. So if I multiply the left-hand side by 4, I should be able to multiply the right-hand side also by 4. Do you agree? Does that make sense? So therefore, see how the left-hand side, which hasn't changed, it hasn't budged one little bit. If it's greater than 4k, but 4k, I just said it's greater than or equal to 4. Do you see that? Do you remember when we saw something like this? When we were working with um, sine x and tan x and x, and we were trying to prove that limit with the radians, and we had a set of inequalities that went one after the other. Can you see that the left-hand side is clearly bigger than or equal to 4? Are you OK with that? What was I trying to prove? What am I trying to prove? I, I want to prove that it's greater than or equal to 0. Is, is 4 greater than or equal to 0? 4 is greater than 0. So then it's also greater than or equal to 0, like that. You see how different inequalities are? They're different kinds of objects. So if the left-hand side is greater than 4, it's definitely greater than 0. That's what I wanted. That is this line over here. I have just proved it for k plus 1. Okay. So um, there's a little more to write, obviously. I actually have to write this line out down the bottom and then rearrange it back into this. And then I can say, ta-da, I have proven it true by the principle of mathematical induction. Okay.